In this video, we learn about the alternate segment theorem, which is part of our course on circle theorems. Now, as you can see on the screen here, I've already written down two examples, and by the end of this video, you should have no trouble working through these. And as you can also see, I've already written down the theorem for the sake of saving a bit of time. So let's go ahead. The alternate segment theorem states that if a tangent and a chord subtend or form an angle alpha, then all angles subtended by that chord in the alternate segment will be equal to alpha. Okay, this theorem is often seen as quite confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let me illustrate exactly what all of this is saying. First of all, let's say we have a circle, so something looking like this. There we go. Let's clarify what is meant by a segment. And for that, I'm adding two points to the circumference of the circle, which I'll join by a line segment, like so. Now, this line segment is known as a chord, which is the word used inside the theorem right here. And this chord splits our circle into two segments. And in fact, I could illustrate those segments. I'll say that this segment that I'm shading in green right now is what we could call a major segment, as it covers more than half of this disc. And then I could say that this segment that I'm shading in blue is a minor segment. So that's the first thing to establish. When splitting a circle into two this way, using a chord, it creates what we call two segments. Next, consider what we're dealing with in this first line here. We're dealing with a tangent and a chord which subtend an angle alpha. Well, here's the whole idea. Again, I'll quickly draw a circle, something looking like this. And let's say I have a tangent to the circle right here. So at this point here. Now, if I add another point to my circle, say right here, and join that point to the point at which the tangent touches the circumference of the circle, then I'll be creating a chord, like so. And in fact, I'll make a copy of this diagram right away because I'm going to be using it twice. There we go. Now, this tangent and this chord form two angles. One of them is this angle right here, which I'll go ahead and call alpha. And the other one for which I'll use the copy of that illustration here would be this angle here, which I'll go ahead and call beta. And so far, nothing there seems too confusing. But as the name of this theorem suggests, we're dealing with the alternate segment. And given this scenario, that is a tangent which passes through the end point of a chord to a circle, the segment that we'll refer to as the alternate segment depends entirely on which of the two angles we're considering. And here's the whole idea. If we're considering this angle alpha here, then the alternate segment would be the segment that I'm highlighting in green right now. And the way I like to think of it is that the alternate segment is the one that isn't inside the angle that we're considering. Hopefully you can see what I mean. This little segment here is inside the angle alpha. So that's not the alternate segment. And following the same reasoning for this second illustration here, given this tangent which passes through one of the endpoints of this chord, if the angle we're considering is this angle beta, then the alternate segment would be this smaller one right here. All right, recognizing which of the two segments is the alternate segment is important, and hopefully we're now comfortable with that. And so moving on to the rest of this theorem, what we're being told here is that all angles subtended by the chord in the alternate segment will be equal to alpha. Or perhaps instead of saying alpha, we could say all angles subtended by the chord in the alternate segment will be equal to the angle formed by the tangent and the chord, whether that be the alpha here or whether that be the beta here. And so here's what that means. Consider this illustration here in which the angle formed is the alpha that we see. When we speak of an angle subtended by the chord in the alternate segment, what that's referring to is any angle formed by this chord at any point along the circumference of this alternate segment. Here's what I mean. Let's say I were to consider this point right here on the circumference, and I were to join that point to the endpoints of the chord, like so. Then that forms an angle at the circumference of that alternate segment, right here, and that angle is formed or subtended by the chord. And what this theorem is telling us is that this angle is equal to the angle formed by the tangent and the chord. In other words, that angle is equal to alpha. And what's quite interesting is that it doesn't matter which point along the circumference of the alternate segment we consider, 
the angle formed will always equal to alpha. So for instance, I could consider this point right here. And again, I join it to the endpoints of the chord, like so. And once more, the angle formed would equal to alpha. And that's what this theorem is telling us. And although I could stop there and move straight on to examples one and two, let's quickly illustrate this theorem on this second circle here. Well, the reasoning is identical in every way. Looking at this alternate segment here, if I place a point anywhere along its circumference, so we could say right here, and if I join that point to the end points of the chord, like so, then the angle formed at the circumference of that alternate segment, this one right here, would also be equal to beta. There we go. And that's all that this theorem is actually telling us. All that being said, let's go ahead and work through these two examples. For example one, we're told the line AB is tangent to the circle at B. So that's this line here passing through points A and B, which is tangent to this circle at point B. We're then told the given angle ABC is equal to 65 degrees, so that's this angle here, we need to find the angle BDC, which is this angle here. Okay, now the first thing I like to do is add any numerical information that's given to the diagram we have here. And in this case, we're told that the angle ABC is equal to 65 degrees, and so that would be this angle right here. And so I'll add the angle here, that's 65 degrees. Next, I make a note of the fact that we need to find the angle BDC, which would be the angle that I'm hovering over right now. And I'll add a little angle here, like so, in red. That's the angle we need to find. And now summarizing the information we have here, the line passing through the points AB is tangent to this circle at B. Furthermore, B happens to be the endpoint of two chords, those being the chord BC and the chord BD. But taking a step back and keeping the alternate segment theorem in mind, we quickly realize that the 65 degree angle that we're given here is the angle formed between the tangent and the chord BC. And as we said previously, this chord BC splits our circle into two segments. We have a little one here and a larger segment that I'm hovering over right now. And since this smaller segment is inside this 65 degree angle, the alternate segment in this case is the one that I'm currently shading in green, like so. Okay, the next thing we notice is that this point D is on the circumference of the alternate segment. And consequently, this angle at D is an angle at the circumference of the alternate segment, which is formed or subtended by the chord BC, which we can place further emphasis on by drawing over these lines, like so. There we go. And so going back to our theorem here, which remember tells us that all angles subtended by the chord in the alternate segment will be equal to the angle formed by the tangent and that chord. And so since this angle at D is subtended by this chord, we can state that according to the alternate segment theorem, it must equal to 65 degrees. And so on our test or exam paper, we could state that according according to the alternate segment theorem, the alternate segment theorem, two dots, the angle B, D, C must equal to 65 degrees. And we can go ahead and box that answer. Done. Okay, let's work through example two. Now in this one, we're told that the line PS is tangent to the circle at P. So that's the line we see down here. It's tangent to the circle at this point right here, P. Next, given that the angle SPR equals to 70 degrees and the angle RPQ equals to 51 degrees, find the angle QRP. Okay, well just as I did for the first example, let me start by adding this information to the illustration we have. So angle SPR would be this angle that I'm hovering over right now, and it's equal to 70 degrees. And so I'll write that here. We have this angle, which is equal to 70 degrees. Next angle RPQ, which is the angle I'm hovering over right now. Well, it's equal to 51 degrees. And so I'll add that to the illustration as well. That angle is 51 degrees. 
Finally, we need to find the angle QRP. So that's the angle I'm hovering over right now, and I'll add that in red right here. That's the angle we need to find. All right, well, once more, summarizing the information that's given to us here, we know that this line passing through P and S is a tangent to the circle. Indeed, it's tangent at this point P. Furthermore, looking at all of this, we quickly notice that P is an endpoint to two chords again. Indeed, we have this chord here, PR, and the other chord here, PQ. But since we're given the angle SPR, that's the 70 degree angle we have right here, it's clear that the chord to consider here is the chord RP, or PR. Okay, so we have a tangent to this circle which passes through an endpoint of one of its chords. And in doing so, it forms this 70 degree angle. Consequently, we can quickly state that the alternate segment that we need to be considering here is the one that I'm shading in green right now. And then we quickly see that the angle here at point Q on the circumference of this alternate segment is formed by the chord PR. And consequently, according to the alternate segment theorem, this angle here at Q must equal to 70 degrees which, remember, is the angle formed by the tangent and the chord. Finally, to find the angle QRP, that's the angle at the top here, we use the fact that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle must equal to 180 degrees. And so if I go ahead and call the angle QRP X, we can go ahead and state that 70 degrees plus 51 degrees plus the unknown angle we're after, X, must equal to 180 degrees. Now adding 70 to 51, that's 121, so 121 degrees plus x must equal to 180. Finally, I get rid of this 121 which is being added to x, and I do so by subtracting 121, which I do on both sides of this equation. And so on the left-hand side, we'll be left with x, which equals to 180 minus 121. And by all means check, but 180 minus 121 is equal to 59 degrees. And we're done. We've now found the angle QRP. And there we have it. That's it for this tutorial on the alternate segment theorem.